Now we're going to talk about monocytes and macrophages. So obviously monocytes differentiate into macrophages when they enter the tissue. So first we're going to talk about the morphology of a monocyte. So they have a horseshoe nucleus as we can see in this image right here. They're about 15 to 18 micrometers in diameter and they compromise about uh, they comprise about five to ten percent of our blood leukocytes. Um, they often have a bluish gray cytoplasm when stained and they contain a variable number of red granules. Red granules. So they're made in the bone marrow and released in the blood where they circulate for about eight hours. They then differentiate into macrophages. Now this differentiation into macrophages has a few different things. So obviously here's your same cell right here, let's pretend this is the same size, it'll increase by five to 10 times, which is huge. Now the complexity of the organelles on the inside here, get a few different colors going, the complexity of all these different organelles increases like crazy, and they also have increased numbers obviously to increase to account for this five to 10 times uh, uh, increase in size. They also have increased phagocytic activity, so they're better at ingesting bacteria, yum, 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 yum. And they have increased levels of hydrolytic enzymes. Now, what is the function of monocyte and macrophage? Phagocytosis of microorganisms, and they kill them using oxygen-dependent and oxygen-independent uh, pathways. They also recruit uh, immune cells to, uh, immune system cells to the inflammatory site, which is done only by macrophages, so that's macrophage-independent, and they present antigen to T cells. So this is macrophages only. Monocytes are not antigen presenting cells. Um, so macrophages are dispersed kind of throughout the body traveling uh, using amoeboid movement. So if you know what an amoeboid is, if you don't look up a video of how amoeboids move and that's how macrophages move. Um, and they're named according to their location. So there's different macrophages for different areas of the body. So one that I'm particularly interested in are glial cells which are in the brain, or microglial cells as they're called. So they're kind of, they clean up the garbage of the brain, but they're also implicated in various diseases. And I'm interested to see uh, what their role is in cancer, but there's other roles obviously like Alzheimer's disease and any kind of um, neurodegenerative disorder uh, that they might be involved in. Um, there's also histiocytes in the connective tissues, alveolar macrophages in the lungs, mesangial cells in the kidney, and osteoclasts in the bone. So there's various types depending on where you are in the body. Um, so macrophages are initially activated by the act of phagocytosis, um, Th1 cytokines, interferon gamma, inflammatory meteors and bacterial components. So you might have a little bacteria here that's, you know, gets broken down or something and it releases its content and this might be activated by some sort of the content there. And then activated macrophages also exhibit enhanced phagocytic activity, killing ability, secretion of inflammatory mediators, and the ability to activate T lymphocytes. So these can then go on to activate cytotoxic T lymphocytes, which is deadly to any bacteria. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about dendritic cells, which are professional antigen-presenting cells, so we're gonna learn all about that and the different types of, of, uh, of communication they use to uh, talk to T cells. And uh, then we're going to talk about T cells and how the different morphologies and different um, expression of CD antigens on their bodies help us to differentiate between the different types of them.